Hey, this is Anime Shark. Today I am doing a recap of Somali and the Forest Spirit. We're almost about 5,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing. Most of you guys watching without subscribing, which is really heartbreaking, so please subscribe. The story began. The Golem, a guardian of the forest, comes across a young girl called Somali. Raising her, they have been visiting cities where they arrive at the largest one yet. As Somali eats, Golem explains to others present that they are searching for humans. Considered food, Golem has Somali disguised as a minotaur as citizens think back to the war between them and humans. Staying at an inn, Golem seems to stitch Somali's horn back onto her cape and shows other protective behavior when he hears a noise from outside. Shopping for supplies, Golem barters with a merchant selling precious stones, having some of his own to give in a financial transaction. Not receiving as much as he was expecting, Golem opens his Golem Eye, which is capable of analyzing the structure of an object. Identifying many of the goods on sale are either not what they say they are, or composite materials such as gold being made largely of copper. Golem manages to gain the money for the goods he was giving in exchange for his silence. He then notices that Somali has wandered off, and she has found the cat she was following can speak. Whilst she takes to petting the cat, she hears that her smell reminds her of the food that the cat eats. Scanning the city, Golem finds Somali before the cat can figure out that she is a human girl. Leaving, Golem instructs her to take his finger, having noticed the behavior between parents and their children in the city. By a campfire, Golem contemplates his wrist, which has fragments chipping away. Somali wakes up in the morning and has caught a fish for breakfast, spotting some rabbits and keen to play with them. In her excitement, she trips and scrapes her knee. Golem notes they are out of medicine, at which point Shizuno appears and offers some. Golem was aware he was watching them and knows him as an Oni. Shizuno takes them back to his home to help alleviate the injury further, where they meet Yabashira as well who flings a fruit at them after missing Shizuno, agreeing to teach Golem about medicine. Shizuno feels bad after Golem really does break a piece of himself off for medicine studying purposes. As the lessons are underway, Yabashira and Somali enjoy tending to the home where Somali is keen to help since Golem does everything for her. At night after Somali is sent to sleep, Golem explains to them that he has left the forest to find Somali's parents and return them to her. There is a reason he needs to hurry. Golem removes his jacket to reveal parts of him have crumbled away, particularly on his entire right arm. Golems live for precisely 1,000 years, and he lived 998 years and 253 days. In the morning, Yabashira gifts some sweets to Somali for her journey as he and Shizuna wave goodbye to her and Golem. In a desert region, Somali receives a drink from a water pump before smelling the sweet bag Yabashira gave her. Golem remembers telling Shizuno and Yabashira that the end of his 1,000-year life is coming to an end. Reaching a gap in the mountain to Anfol City, Golem sells some items before searching for a place for Somali to eat. Outside a restaurant, she spots a box moving by itself, which has Kikila hiding underneath it. With the place understaffed, Golem agrees to work to help Kikila's father, Kokolila, and mother Gina. As Somali and Kikila bond, Golem serves customers and hears that there have been sites of humans on the west end of the Osuna Desert. To save up for the supplies required for the journey, Golem continues to work, but the devotion to that results in a lack of attention paid to Somali. Still not permitted to leave his supervision, Golem relents in letting her head out into the city with Kikila on an errand for his dad. With Somali upset with the consideration that her dad might leave her, Kikila suggests they ask for the Yozane flowers. If one is brought back alive, it will grant a wish. The underground world where these flowers are found belongs to different creatures, yet after locating a flower Somali pleads to let her stay with her dad forever. A large mushroom with multiple eyes nearby spots her, before a crossbow bolt is fired into it. Golem receives the order as he continues his waiter duties at Kokolila's restaurant in Anthol City. Gina asks him if he is worried, before being told not to be as she is sure the kids will be fine. In the cave under the city, Muthrika finally found Somali after he defended her from a multi-eyed and fanged mushroom. Kikila greets him as his master and reveals he is part of the Tsuchinoko team. 
Noticing her Yuzang flower is dying, Somoli is shown the glowing roots of the Tsukiyami tree, the sap of which the flowers feed off. Somoli is determined to head further in to locate a flower strong enough for her wish. Led by Muthrika, she travels with Kikila to find a large one that sustains many flowers. They are cornered by a Tsuchu lizard, which Somali implores to let her keep the flower since she wants to stay with her dad forever. By nightfall, they are back, and Golem sees the Yuzing flower, but asks why she neglected his order to return. If she continues to act with similar recklessness, he will be unable to travel with her any further. Golem hears from Muthrika how Somali believed the superstition that the Yuzing flower grants wishes, and that her wish was to stay with her father forever. Kikila continues to try and speak to Somali within her room, but upon finding her, he sees she is ill with a fever. The only medicine available is for Shirigaras. Somali is too ill to stomach food and Golem heads out to buy medicine. At this hour someone does answer, but reticent to specify that Somali is human. Golem says he requires medicine that will work on all clans. The medicine succeeds in diminishing the fever. By morning, Golem announces he needs to work longer to reacquire the money for them to travel to the Osuna Desert. Somali's recovery is all that mattered to him. So using his money for medicine is no problem. He says there is no replacement for Somali. Somali and Golem travel via wagon before reaching Wincup Village. As they consider what to eat, Somali decides on ice cream. Meeting Yuzoi, they sit together along with Heitora as Golem mentions that they are looking for humans for research purposes. Yuzoi recommends that Somali come with them across the desert. Alone in their room, Yuzoi reveals that she extended the offer since Somali has a similar smell to Heitora and he wonders what would a human be doing with a Golem. Preparing the wagon, Golem asks Heitora if there is anything wrong. Making their way they are beset by sandstorms. Golem remarks the situation is more like a sea during a storm than a desert. He notices something approaching, and Yuzoi recognizes it as a sand shark. Reaching a cave, Yuzoi and Somali gather torch bugs to use their glow for the night. Setting up a tent, Golem raises with Heitora that humans were seen in the western Osuna desert, and asks if he has heard the same thing. He reveals he is human, and is traveling to cure his condition. Gathering water, Yusoi declares her intent to kill Somali since her blood could be used to cure Heitora. Golem asks Heitora to explain his circumstances. Traveling with Yusoi, they could not find any answers until a fortune teller told them that only new blood could cure corrupted blood. Yuzi must have remembered this hence why she means to murder Somali. Shouting out, she manages to repel Yuzoi due to her enhanced hearing and Somali runs having promised to stay with her dad forever. Caught, she staggers back and falls into the stream. Yuzoi rescues her and they sit silently together before Yuzoi apologizes and explains how Heitora is human. Golem arrives and Yuzoi tearfully states she wanted to be with Heitora forever. Haitora reveals details of his past and how he lived with his family before his village was attacked by grotesques. His comrades and daughter's friends were caught and people who resisted had their limbs cut off or devoured on the spot. During this past event, taking refuge in a cave in the forest, Haitora decided to head outside out of necessity. Finding Yuzoi's mother, he killed her and had to become like them where they had to eat her to survive. His wife and daughter consuming the flesh caused them to turn into feathered beings and pass away from the transformation. Heitora was found by the young Yuzoi, but presently does not feel he deserves to be her family. Yuzoi has overheard this and feels he has been lying to her the whole time. As they continue traveling through the desert, they happen across a dragon twister. Yuzoi and Somali are blown away, with Golem assessing they must wait until they are able to follow them. Somali raises what Yuzoi said, that family based on a lie cannot become real, but love is never a lie. Golem says that Heitora must face the person to whom he owes atonement, even if this deepens the scars. He then locates Somali and Yuzoi who are being chased by a center bird. Although Golem opts to be the decoy, Heitora uses himself and draws the creature's attention. He considers after raising Yuzoi that the only way to atone was to risk his life for hers. He trips in the sand, and as he lays having accepted this is fine, Yuzoi appears to slice the canterbird's tendrils away from Heitora. Golem's flare results in it flying off, 
angrily telling him not to die to get out of this. Yuzoi wants to know why he stayed with her all this time, and if did he not realize she might kill him if she learned the truth. Replying that he didn't care, Heitora tells her she is the only thing he lives for, and would have given up his life any time she asked for it. Yuzoi tells him to survive, to stop thinking that he needs to die to make it right. Golem begins to feel guilty regarding his soon-to-be-broken promise to stay with Somali after seeing Heitora promise to live with Yuzoi. He reveals to Heitora about his upcoming demise, and hears about a village west of the desert where any sort of information can be found. The next day, the group reaches the end of the desert, so Heitora and Yuzoi split off on their journey while Golem and Somali head for the Ruvard village. After some adventurous traveling, they arrive at a magical village run by friendly witches. They find the library to conduct their research on humans, and with the aid of sister witches Hazel and Perline, find a book regarding humans called The Chronicles of Hereso. Though Somali is suddenly attacked by book-eating monsters called Pescafish. After dealing with them, a massive Pescafish appears and targets the Chronicles. She tries to escape with it, but the attempt is in vain as it is destroyed by the monster, who subsequently turns its attention to Somali herself. Golem intervenes and stops the beast, but loses much of his armored shell. Somali tearfully apologizes for Golem being injured and for losing the book, but he reassures her that her safety is priority. The witches check to see if someone had previously read the Chronicles, discovering that the sole person who did was Isold Nebsolv, the head librarian of the library over 300 years prior. After considering the failing health of the head librarian, Perline decides to give Golem a map of the library to find their way. However, they are caught by security monsters and branded as intruders. Golem grabs Somali, and they manage to escape, arriving in the heart of the library where the aging head librarian resides. Isold reveals that she wrote the Chronicles of Hereso due to her ancestors' experiences with humans as a young girl. She explains that as a child, Fyodor and Nebsolv crash landed due to a storm in a village of humans who were governed by a golem called Hereso. Fyodora quickly grew accustomed to the culture of the village, but her feelings instantly changed when the villagers mobbed together to kill a peaceful neighboring monster. She is forced to reveal her inhuman nature to save a villager and is consequently branded as a grotesque, the human term for monster, forcing her to leave. Isold finishes the story and tells of humans residing at the end of the world. She also reveals that she knows Somali is human but is proud to have met one who loves their world before she suddenly passes away. En route to their next destination, Golem and Somali take shelter from rain in a large treehouse. The abode is seasonally vacant, but still houses cooking ingredients, so Somali asks Golem to make something for her. After sifting through recipes, Golem makes a soful which Somali finds delicious. Before she can finish it, or warn Gollum of a sudden loose tooth, Shizuno and Yabashira suddenly appear at their door asking for shelter. The next day, the two Honest join the group and travel to snowy Bygone City, a savage town, in search of a famous dentist. They find the dentist, a mouse-looking man named Soak, and he tells Shizuno about the ways of dentistry, but Somali becomes fearful due to her new dental problem. She flees into a trio of ruffians, causing an alley brawl between them and Golem with the two Anis. During the scuffle, Somali's tooth comes free, but upon their return to the dentist, he informs her that it was a baby tooth and would be replaced. In need of a place to stay, the group is approached by an innkeeper who offers his place as thanks for getting rid of the gang from before, and also in exchange for being the town bodyguards. As Somali sleeps in her new bed, Shizuno confirms with Golem that Somali is human, and finds out that the automaton traded his forest guardianship to protect her instead. Golem recalls to Shizuno how he met Somali in his forest. While on patrol, he passed by a toppled cart full of dead humans that had been attacked. A forest animal led him away from the wreckage to where he discovered a girl bound in chains beneath a tree, where she suddenly called him Dad. Against his will, the girl began follow him, day and night, rain or shine. Over time, Gala began to grow attached to her, even saving her from drowning when she jumped into a pond to retrieve his recently lost armored shell. Golem decided to leave the forest with the girl to find humans, and subsequently names her Somali, based on the animal that initially led him to her. 
In the present, Golem finishes his story and reveals to Shizuno his crippling physical body due to his end nearing. The next day, the group is tasked to bodyguard the town. So Golem and Yabashira head out to work while Shizuno cares for Somali. Over the next few days, Somali thinks of a present to give to Golem while he works, eventually deciding to knit something. One day, an innkeeper named Rosa arrives with food and supplies for the group and helps Somali with her present. She teaches Somali to make a knitted bracelet for Golem and hugs the young girl with joy when she starts to get the hang of it. However, that night in town, Rosen encounters the trio gang from before and informs them that she figured out Somali is human. As they wrap up their daily duties for the final time, Golem and Yabashira shop for supplies for their trip while Somali finishes her bracelet. That night, Somali presents Golem with her gift and is happily surprised when he gifts her a similar bracelet he found in town. They all play in the snow before suddenly Golem sees a hunting party in the distance in search for humans. Yabashira finally learns of Somali's humanity and agrees to distract the party while Golem, Shizuno, and Somali flee into a nearby mine. They find their path blocked by a broken bridge when they are approached by another hunting party, forcing Golem to carry the other two and jump down into the cavern below. They make their way toward the exit when Rosa appears and, under the guise of helping them escape, suddenly locks them in a cage. Rosa tells them how her childhood village was persecuted by a nearby human settlement, forcing her to take revenge on all humans. The hunters approach for the kill, but as Gollum attempts to fight, he instantly collapses in a heap and loses an arm. Having used up too much life energy, as Somali is taken, Golem suddenly transforms into a monstrous hulking beast, startling everyone. Golem targets Rosa and the hunting party and attacks them, prompting them to run away in fear. As Golem chases them down, Somali blocks Golem's path of destruction, causing him to come to his senses and shut down. He awakens a few days later in a forest meadow and apologizes to everyone for his actions, adding that his injuries to himself will not heal like the others will. That night, Golem and Shizuno go for a walk where he tells the Oni that his physical capabilities are crippled and his allotted time may be shortened, though the Oni still believes something can be done to help. The next day, the group arrives in a town celebrating an annual festival. While Somali and Yabashira watch a carnival show, Golem sneaks away, feeling that his time to depart has come. When Somali realizes this, she sprints off to find him locating him in a nearby forest. As she approaches, Gollum reveals to her that she is better off without him, using his recent explosion of rage as an example of why he should be alone. Somali pleads with him to stay, eventually causing the automaton to realize he truly has emotions. With a renewed promise and bond, the father and daughter proclaim their promise to stay together forever.